Um, so the expedition is actually run by an organisation called X Expedition, um, with two X's because um, it's an all-female fem expedition. Um, and we'll be travelling across the North Pacific um, into the North Pacific garbage patch, which is um, the densest accumulation of marine plastic anywhere on Earth. So is that uh, that great sort of raft of plastic that people might have seen on, on televisions like David Attenborough's and such like? Yeah, exactly. Um, they think it's about sort of three times the size of France. Um, and we'll be going through it over three and a half weeks to take samples um, to feed into large scale studies and help sort of learn more about it and raise awareness of the problem of plastic pollution in the oceans. When's this actually taking place? So I'm going to be heading off just after TT week. Um, we actually set sail from Hawaii on the 22nd of June um, and then we'll be arriving in Vancouver in the middle of July. How did you get involved? Um, I found out um, about it from a friend at uni and they'd just done a tour around Britain and I had a look on the website and just thought it looked fantastic and sent off my CV and application um, and there wasn't any any expeditions at that point but they got back to me about two months later and offered me an interview for the North Pacific expedition which I obviously jumped at and it's all gone from there really. And it's specifically an all women expedition is it? Yes yeah, so it's all women um, because Still, at the moment, um, women are massively underrepresented in the science, um, engineering and technology sectors. I think they only make up about 13% worldwide. That's so right. it's about um, inspiring more women to get into those fields and exploration and just showing that, you know, women can do things on the world stage as well and, and um, that sort of thing. What inspired you to get involved in, in, in not this expedition per se but actually in, in science and technology and, and marine biology in your case? I've always been really, um, I, I've always loved the ocean um, from a very early age. I sort of snorkeled and dived around the waters of the Isle of Man and that really um, sort of inspired me to get into science and it's no, I was ne never necessarily a very academic person, but as soon as I s took the leap and went for ocean science, I realised that that was exactly what I wanted. Once you to. found your passion, that was yeah. I, I, I when I went to uni, the, f the first two weeks, I was like, wow, well, yeah, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. So, I feel quite lucky in that respect. And so, actually, on a day-to-day -day basis, obviously, you're going on this expedition. What else do you do when, with your sort of day-to-day -day life? Are you looking for more work? Do you sort of take freelance contracts, or how do you work? So, I've actually been working with the Isle of Man government at the moment. Um, the chief minister um, outlined that he wanted to make a plan to reduce plastic on the island. So, the Isle of Man government actually got me in as a, a sort of consultant mm -hmm. um, to help them look at ways that they could reduce single-use plastic within government and then we're hoping to broaden that scheme out to island-wide and, and sort of become more of a um, environmentally conscious island. So it's been really nice to look at the source of the problem and, ha and solutions for that um, and then it's the end of the, the other end of the scale and look at what we've actually done and, and look at um, Hopeful, so hopefully find some solutions for the problem that's already out there. And it's something that's really taken off in, in the last, I know, six months, year or so, This whether it was off the back of uh, David Attenborough's programme or not, I don't know, but suddenly there has been a massive interest in, in the single-use plastics and companies, firms, organisations, left, right and centre seem to have taken it on board. Yeah, exactly. It's um, a lot of people, I think a lot of people just weren't aware of the problem and it, it's you can liken it to sort of the smoking ban when that sort of thing came in beforehand. Now you look back on the fact that you could smoke freely and in, inside, you think it's quite kind of mad and it's not until you kind of look at those those problems and then you think, oh wow, that's really a weird way that we were doing things. And I think it's that same shift in people's mentality and that's happening around plastics, which is really exciting and I hope you know, it keeps this momentum and, and we really make some positive changes to the way that we live our lives.